Hi everyone. So we're going to talk about closure and that really, really important word that so many people hang on to because you're probably thinking, I want to have a closure conversation. And you're thinking, especially if you're dealing with a narcissist, you say, I want to put this to bed for once and for all. I want to have a mature conversation with this person and say, you know what? It didn't work out, but I don't hate you. There's not, I don't like whatever. Some of you may say, I may even be at the point where you say, I forgive you. Some of you, some of you say, I just want to get what I was thinking in my mind, off of my mind, and just put it out there and just tell our narcissist once and for all how I feel, what I went through, and why, you know, why I'll never ever come back to them. You just want to have that final conversation to close the door. Well, if you're dealing with a narcissist, the narcissist is not going to give you that satisfaction of closing that chapter in your life. They're never going to do it, especially if you broke up with the narcissist. If you broke up with the narcissist, they are set on revenge. Narcissists have a feeling of uh, they need a, they need to win. They need to win. That is a key part of who they are. So even though you broke up with them because they're abusive towards you, they're emotionally manipulative, they're invalidating, they're neglecting you, all of these horrible things that they're doing to someone they're in a relationship with. And you said, look, for my own mental sanity, I need to end this relationship to maintain some peace of myself. The narcissist is going to interpret that as you're abandoning me or I'm going to get you before you get me. So the best thing to do when you break up with the narcissist is just to completely cut contact to say it's over with. Here's your stuff. Here's give me my stuff. I don't care what you know. Give me my stuff and let's never ever talk again. Block them and move on with your life. That's the best thing to do. However, most of us are not going to do that. Most of us don't find out until after the fact that that's what we should have done. At least that was my case, right? When I broke up with the narcissist, it was a very difficult decision. It wasn't like, oh, I decided to do this out of nowhere or I was mad. I broke up with him because I genuinely was hurt. And I was at a place in my life where I felt like I've done everything I can to make this relationship work, to salvage this relationship. And it just, I just keep ending up in, in square one. Like how much more of myself can I keep giving to this person? And I'm changing for the worst. I'm being more aggressive. I'm arguing more. I, I feel like I'm defending myself all the time. And that's not the kind of relationship I want to be in. So I said, I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to end this relationship. It was a bad day. And we were hanging together all day. And we just could not get along the entire day. I mean, for like six hours straight. And I was like, okay, this is enough. I've had it. After I broke up with the narcissist, all it basically was for me, I mean, I thought that it was him trying to process his emotions and me processing my emotions. And the narcissist mentally manipulated me and played games with me. He would one week tell me he loved me and he wanted to be with me and that this was just a break that was necessary and he supports me. And the next week he wanted nothing to do with me. And he did this on and off for two and a half months. And I remember having a conversation with him around September and I said, look, I don't know what's going on because we broke up in June. I said, look, I don't know what's going on, but we keep doing this back and forth. I keep trying to have a conversation with you because I wanted to have a clear conversation to end things properly and to set boundaries because at the time we were like in couples therapy and there was a lot going on. So I was like, I need, I want to discuss this. I wanted to end things. They had asked me, do I want to continue couples therapy while we were there? And he said he didn't know. I told them no. So they said, okay, let's take a break for a month. After that month, I was trying to have a conversation with him to say, hey, like, I don't want to continue. I don't think it makes sense. I don't think we haven't even had a conversation about our relationship. We're not together anymore. Like, we haven't had a conversation. He refused to have a closure conversation with me for months. And that's exactly what I was trying to do. And I think it was done intentionally. It took me a year and a half to finally realize he did that intentionally. Actually, when we broke no contact, that's when I realized he did it intentionally. The narcissist refused to give me a closure conversation because he didn't want to close that chapter. He didn't want there to be a final chapter where boundaries were set and we were on the same page. He did not want that. And it, me trying to initiate that was infuriating for him because it felt like he was losing. So he wanted to play games and hoover and devalue and try to discard because it was kind of like, you're not breaking up with me. I'm breaking up with you. He was on some other stuff. He was on this immaturity thing when I was too busy trying to gain some sense of my sanity back. I felt like I love this person. I sacrificed myself for this person. I sacrificed my boundaries for this person. I went places I thought I would never go and I, I refused to continue to sacrifice myself. I was reclaiming myself. And that's what breaking up with him was about. It had nothing. It wasn't about him. It was about me. It was I don't want this for my life. And I chose to reject it. 
and in the process reject him and it was difficult because i still loved him when i broke up with him i didn't break up with him because i didn't love him anymore it was the opposite i had loved him very much i just decided i didn't want that for my life and i was going to move on the narcissist doesn't want you to have peace they don't want to set boundaries because they want a revolving door they want the opportunity to come back when they want to and to leave when they want to and they want to keep doing that because they know that if you have that conversation and you set boundaries you're less likely to be an open door when they're ready to come back this is why we broke up in june and i told i had a conversation with him about boundaries in september he came to my house in the end of October telling me that he wanted that he still loved me and that he wanted to be in my life and he doesn't like that we haven't been talking and I told him I don't feel comfortable with integrating him back in my life and I don't want to date because I need because before I consider dating him ever again I need to know that things have changed and I need to see that he's willing to be my friend and to respect me before I even consider the door of dating again because I'm not at that place I told him those exact words he held my hand, he grabbed my hand, and he promised me that he wasn't going to do anything outside of my boundaries, that he had heard me, he apologized to me, he said that he loved me, and that he wanted to be in my life, and he asked me if it was okay to call me every day, and I told him, it's not okay to call me every day, I think that's too much, because we're not together, and I said, well, how about this, let's, let's talk in the middle of the week, and then you know, let's see each other on, on Saturday and let's see how it feels to be around each other to see if we can be friends or not. And he said, okay. He left my house that fall. I think it was a Wednesday that we talked. I want to believe it was a Wednesday. And so it was a Wednesday that he, you know, it was around the time he was supposed to call me. And I was like, oh, he hasn't called me yet. So I believe I called him like, okay, let me call him. Maybe I, I don't think we ever established who was going to call who. So I think I called him or he called me, I don't remember. And our conversation, I kid you not, was about three minutes. Because when I called him, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm at the gym. I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, you know, I was like, how, how are you doing? And then I was like, would you rather meet? I was like, would you rather talk later because we're at the gym? And he said, yeah. The conversation was literally like maybe two minutes. I remember after hanging up from that conversation, I told myself, this isn't going to work we can't be friends i need to i need to go no contact like that's when i made the decision i need to go no contact so that's that sunday he calls me and he says um he calls me and he says i need to talk to you and i said okay you know and i'm already planning in the back of my head like i'm gonna tell him this is not gonna work and then he tells me i don't think we should be in contact right now that's what he tells me and i said well right now i said you know i don't think we should be in contact at all and I basically said my piece and I said, you know, I really pray that you get healing and you don't ever do what you did to me, to someone else, because nobody deserves that. And I wished him the best in his life. He said, okay. He didn't say anything to me. He just said, okay. And then we hung up the phone and we didn't talk to each other. This was the begin. I think this was maybe a week before his birthday. So this was like the beginning of November. So then... Flash forward a couple of months, this is in March, I had unfriended him on Facebook and, uh, you know, I unfriended him on Facebook months before. And I unfriended him on Facebook and he sends me a friend request on Facebook in March. I looked at the friend request like this, he has to be out of his mind, <laughs> honestly. And I was kind of like, why? Um, and I prayed to God because part of me was like, part of me was like, do I, you know, he used to be important to me. Like that initial reaction I always had was he used to be important to me. So I don't want to be mean. And then I said, wait a minute. No, you have a right to set boundaries. So I didn't accept the firm request, but he removed the firm request anyway, within a couple of hours. Flash forward a couple months, July hits, or maybe it's the end of June. End of June. It was July, I think. July of 2020 hits. And he sends me a text message telling me that he wants to meet up with me in person to talk because he wants to gain closure. And I'm in a place in my life where at the time I was kind of like, I don't need, like I had literally come to terms earlier that year that look, I don't need closure from him. Like there's nothing he can say or do that's going to change the events of the past or make them okay. Like closure is for normal relationships. Closure is when things went wrong and we're trying to figure out what went wrong. Closure is not for people who were emotionally and mentally abusive and manipulative and who lied and deceived and felt like they were competing with their girlfriend, not with their, not, you know, who felt like they were trying to build a life or partner with their girlfriend. Trauma 
this trauma automatically closes the door for me of the need to have closure because there's nothing that can be said or done to clear it i'm like this is between me and god now so i'm in a different place in my life so he tells me he needs closure um i and he's and i said closure for who closure for you or closure for me and he says closure for both of us so i politely tell him i don't need closure i've forgiven you and i've forgiven myself for betraying myself and i pray you get what you need basically um and so let's fast forward there <laughs> so then he was like oh he sends me an apology text i'm sorry for what i did i led you to the fruits of darkness i wasn't a good leader i wasn't a good partner all of that jazz written in the message and so i'm like okay you know i appreciate that but i forgive you already forgive yourself that's pretty much the sentiment of my message then i contact him because i listened to his podcast and i thought oh maybe he's depressed so that that trauma bond showed up right and i thought oh i'm control of the situation I, I don't want him anymore and so i said you know oh i listen to your podcast just know i'm praying for you you don't have to respond like leaving it there he says hi how are you doing then he asked me if i'm open to a conversation um video and i was like yeah video v call video call or call or phone call but like i'm not meeting anybody in person and so we ended up having a video call and that's when you know and throughout that call let me tell you something you guys we talked for four and a half hours and we talked for four and a half hours about literally nothing what i mean to tell you the first hour was just like yeah we're in a pandemic we're in a pandemic the weather's been nice yeah the weather's been nice i've been going to the park oh cool i've been working a lot Oh, me too. I've been working a lot. Oh, you moved to a new place. Yeah, I moved to a new place. It's around the corner from my old place. Oh, cool. I'm still in the same place, but I want to move. It was like the most unnecessary conversation. It was almost as if someone put me in a room with a stranger and they asked me to find something to talk about. No, as a matter of fact, if I had got put in a room with a stranger, I'm sure I could have had a deeper conversation with that stranger than I would have had with my ex-boyfriend at that time. So we're about to hang up the call because it's going to go to bed and I have a look on my face because I'm processing and he says what and I said no no it's okay and he's like well what is it and so I said well I just was wondering why you contacted me tell me why this man said you contacted me first I promise you when he said that I picked up my phone and I looked back at the text message like did I reach out to him to to see closure or did he reach out to me because now I'm confused right the gaslighting starts already so he's, I was like, well, no, actually you contacted me first. I said, I contacted you about the podcast to, just to say, you know, praying for you, but you contacted me before then you reinitiated contact. And then he says, well, um, I, I, you know, I, I said everything I needed to say. So now I'm confused because I'm thinking in the back of my mind, why is it that you called me if you already got what you need to say, like, what was it that you wanted to talk to me about? Like, I don't, I don't understand the reason of us having sitting here having a conversation about nothing important, just so you, just for you to say, I've already said what I need to say to you. What is the point? Like, why? So now I feel like, okay, now the games are being played. So I just was like, well, you know, so I start talking about you weren't a good boyfriend. And I wasn't, I wasn't berating him at all. I was just telling him where I was. I said, you know what? I've moved on from the relationship. I'm in a different place in my life. I've already forgiven you. I don't want to spend time and energy on the relationship. And I just told him straight up. I said, you were not a good boyfriend to me at all. Um, and, you know, it wasn't a good relationship. And it was, tr it was trouble from the beginning we got together. And he said, I was just trying to get the relationship back to what it was. And I said, well, there was no good part of the relationship for me. It started off in deceit and manipulation and it ended up being horrible. I was like, being in our relationship was like walking into a burning building. And that's what I told him. I said, our relationship was a burning building and we willingly walked into it because it had no chance to survive because it didn't start on a good, in a good way. And it didn't. It started with him pretending to be somebody he wasn't. When I found out that information, that destroyed, the, that was the first blow to our relationship, right? A, amongst many other things. But pretty much he just sat there and listened. And towards the end of, end of the conversation, he said, well, the relationship was abusive for me. That's, that's a comment he made. And I remember I specifically chose to ignore that comment because I didn't have another four hours of my time to share with him how he was the one who was abusive and how he was trying to gaslight me in that moment. When sometimes you feel like, right, like I want to have a closure conversation. And I felt like in the beginning when we first broke up, I prayed to God, please make him reasonable so we can have this closure conversation. The opportunity he had to sit there with me and have a closure conversation, he chose to waste my time. 
I share all this with you not because I just want all of you to like just hear everything I went through because I honestly don't think about this was a long time ago for me now this is 2022 y'all but I share it with you because for anybody who still has that hope that you're going to talk to the narcissist years later or maybe you know because you're seeing them now and the dust has settled and they're not arguing and they're not loud and you're not dealing with them every day and you think oh there's going to be some change there's going to be some growth the narcissist has grown or changes of capacity promise I promise you're going to deal with the same exact thing unless they have specifically been going through therapy for the long term to really work on themselves in the time that you guys have not been together you're going to see the exact same behavior traits. The two things that he did in that conversation that let me know that he had not changed whatsoever was when I asked him, why did you want to talk to me? And his only thing was to, to say what I texted you. And his first response wasn't even that, right? His first response was, you contacted me. So now I was really thrown off. I was like, okay, you're gaslighting me, right? And so he already started off the conversation in a lie, trying to manipulate me in my thinking process. And then as the conversation goes on, he makes the statement to say, well, you the relationship was abusive for me. Never mind the fact that he lied and deceived to be in a relationship with me, that he went against my boundaries and violated me never mind the the cheating or the manipulation or how he used to yell at me like I was a child or even uh criticize me or berate me in different ways or how he called me out of my name and said blank you on several occasions different never mind all that stuff that happened when I used to just shut down and be quiet and just take it or how he would embarrass me to the point where some of his family members would console me and say oh it's okay it's okay and, and tell him not to behave a certain way towards me. Never mind all of that stuff that took place or the things that I hid from my family out of wanting to protect him and not saying anything or just being quiet because at the time I didn't argue back. I used to just kind of shut down and try to explain my emotions. Never mind that that happened for two years, right? It was abusive for you. And for the narcissist, it probably felt abusive when I started to stand up for myself and have boundaries. But that let me know his perspective hadn't changed. As much as he wrote me and said that he took full accountability for our relationship, he has never apologized to me for abusing me. He's never apologized to me for manipulating me, deceiving me, starting our relationship off on a lie. He never ever for, you know, not walking with me in my walk with God in certain ways. He never took accountability for those things as a man and a responsibility for that. He never ever took accountability or responsibility for the impact that his, his inability to regulate his moods had on me. And how I tried to be patient with him and loving and understanding and how many times I sacrificed myself for him. None of that stuff was ever acknowledged. As many times as he has apologized to me, which has been a lot, he's never acknowledged those specific things for me. So when people say I want to have a closure conversation with a narcissist, I'm just like, this person has been emotionally immature. They have gaslighted you. They have stonewalled you. They are delusional. And they have been that way throughout your entire relationship. What makes you think that all of a sudden in this closure conversation this narcissist is going to demonstrate an emotional capacity that they didn't demonstrate before first of all if they do that should be insulting to you because you think you're thinking well i was in a relationship with you this entire time and i begged you to treat me like i'm a human and you were incapable of doing it then you had every excuse in the book your childhood what you went through what you were going through in your life you not being in the season in your life i was told i'm not in the season of my life you know, so you every little excuse in the book and now all of a sudden you you can demonstrate all the empathy, compassion that I need in the world in this particular moment, right? So usually when the narcissist is doing that, they're manipulating you. So you have to ask yourself serious questions like what does closure really mean? Because if closure means I'm gonna have this peaceful conversation to end things on this in this very peaceful understanding note, what's the likelihood of that happening? No. And if it is happening, I need to be suspicious of when and why is this happening? And is a narcissist trying to get with me in some type of way? Are they trying to hoover me? Is this a love bomb in some capacity? Closure with a narcissist doesn't exist. Because closure to me means that both people have a real honest conversation. And as long as the narcissist thinks that he's smarter than you, or he thinks that he can manipulate you, or he thinks that he's above you in some capacity, or he's in control of the conversation, as long as he has that back thought process that I'm going to win, I'm going to win, you can't have an authentic conversation with someone like that. The narcissist is never going to be 
important enough to waste your mental health on. So as long as you're waiting for the narcissist to to come to you and say, I want to have a closure conversation and I apologize for, and I take responsibility for how our relationship failed, ask them to expand on that. Say, what do you mean? What ways do you take accountability? And watch the disposition of the narcissist change. Because a narcissist has rehearsed a script in their head of what they're going to say and what they expect you to do and how you respond. And when you don't respond the way that they anticipate that you're supposed to respond, then they get angry. This is a game for them. And that's why a closure conversation is not necessary. The only instance, and I'll wrap it up here, the only instance where I'd recommend that you'd have a closure conversation with the narcissist is one where you're where you just need to tell them a piece of your mind and you've completely moved on with your life and you have someone there with you. So if you have like, if you've moved on in your life, you have another boyfriend or you have a husband or you're bringing like, you know, someone there that you can trust that you just need to say your two piece and leave then okay i appreciate that go ahead and do what you need to do but if you're talking to the narcissist in hopes that they're going to understand you and it's going to be empathy and there's going to be a peace and understanding and it's going to be a gwen stefani cool moment it's not going to happen that narcissist does not care about you enough to acknowledge you and the role you played in their life ever and I'm not saying that narcissists can't grow or that some people, because not everyone's a full-blown narcissist. Some people just have narcissistic traits and they go get healing for those areas of trauma that make them narcissistic and they are able to be more vulnerable and open up. People can change. You never know what way in which God can work to change people. However, you have to look at people by their fruit. And the fruit of the conversation was poisonous. And he did what he always knows how to do. He appears charismatic and open. And it appears like, oh, I, you know, I'm just this calm demeanor. I'm, I'm unthreatening in this capacity. And then if he talks long enough, he reveals exactly where, what spirit he's coming from. That was the experience I had with my narcissistic ex. So I know this video was wrapped up in one of like why I don't necessarily believe in closure, especially with a narcissist and what happens when I broke no contact. But the reason that is so important for us to realize that is that you can't have closure with a narcissist is because you get to close the chapter. And it's actually very empowering once you realize my healing was in, always in my hands. It was never in their hands. And there's nothing they can say or do to help heal the situation. It's going to be between me and God now. That was a sigh of relief because then I could say, if I never talk to this narcissist again, if I never ever hear what I need to hear from them, I still have healed and moved on because I made it a decision to heal. I went to therapy. I supported myself by putting myself around people who could support me. I set boundaries in my life. I removed things out of my space that were not enriching me and filling me and, and bringing me joy and peace and contentment. And that is the goal, right? The goal is not to get back at the narcissist. The goal is not to get back with them. It's not for them to change. It does, that, they're, that is never the goal. The goal is to heal. The goal is to say, I'm removing all power I gave to you, narcissist, and I'm taking it back because it doesn't belong to you. Your shirt is so big, y'all. <laughs> it's like two sizes too big, but it's cute, so I'm making it work. But the, the whole goal is to take your power back. And you sometimes will feel like the power's in their hands. I need them. I And it's because you've been emotionally neglected and emotionally abused. You feel like I need to have this closure conversation. I just need to set this boundary. I just need to, you just, oh, your heart tries to connect. But once you realize that you get to take, snatch that power back and it belonged to you the whole time, you realize I don't need to have a conversation with them. God bless them. I hope they heal. But this is my time to focus on me right now. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So hopefully this video was helpful to you in some capacity. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon in the next video. Love you and God bless.